Hi guys, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. We got Amber, Enki, Jonathan, Kylie, Celine, Yinzin, Xian, Aiden, Magdalene, Jason. Okay, someone is missing. Okay, we'll, we'll give them a minute or so. Okay, let me see. How are you this week? I, I must complain something to you. It's very hot here in the UK. I think we're all going to die from hotness. <laughs> it is so hot. So that's a little bit crazy here. And especially yesterday was like 30 degrees. Today it says 29, but it's so hot. Like literally you're sitting and you're melting. There's water coming from you everywhere. We, we, haven't, we haven't actually had this temperature in quite some time. I think last year we had it like for two days and we were all like drained. We, we couldn't walk, we couldn't go out. There was nothing we can do. So I don't know how you survive in your country. How is the weather today there? Hmm? Who can tell me? Uh, in my area, it was raining earlier in the morning. Okay. Otherwise, how is the temperature? Is it hot? Is it cold? It's a bit cold since it was raining. Oh, okay. Oh, so it's a good day for you there then. Well, it's usually for me because like, I'm really scared of the cold. Like, I feel more comfortable in the hot. So You're scared of the cold? Yeah, I don't like the cold. Really? Okay, yeah. that's interesting. <laughs> okay. Um, a bit cold. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, of course. Amber, how about you? How is the weather in your city? It's been raining since morning. Uh huh. Okay. And how is the temperature? Um, it's a bit cold. Hmm. Okay. Do you like it cold or do you like it a little bit warmer? I like it cold. You like it cold? Okay. Good. Jonathan, how about you? Mm, I like it uh, cold. You like it cold as well. I think, guys, because you were having a lot of hot days during the year, so that's why you don't really like uh, hot. I mean, because obviously it's understandable. But for me, you know, the funny thing is, I'm actually born in the middle of uh, July, so next week is my birthday. However, I hate the summer. I honestly hate, hate, hate the summer. But what can I do? I just cannot stand it. I hate sweating. I hate when, and especially because I have a long hair and when it's like getting wet underneath. Oh, that is so annoying, but there's not much I can do. Either I need to tie my hair up, but then I have a headache. So, you know, I have to choose. <laughs> okay, guys, a lot of things we have to do today. First of all, I can see within the Padlet, let's double check again. You've completed, let me just, um one second aha uh -huh, here it is all right so yin zin magdalene ember kylie herlisher nathan uh gio adrina i don't know who is this jjt oh, oh that's jonathan jonathan okay and celine has done the homework very well good enki you were absent last week right yeah, I was absent. You were absent, yeah, okay. All right, so that was one part of the homework. The second part was to do uh, unit five and six. Was it five and six? Okay, so you needed to do, yes, unit five, page 60 and page 61. So, have you done it? I need you, I need guys to see, give me a reaction. Any kind of reaction if you've done your homework? And how many of you have done the homework? So we can check it out. One, two, three, four. Only four students. Five. Are you kidding me, guys? You haven't done the homework. I only did the worksheet one. Uh -huh, okay. As in the one that's in the book. Okay, I think we're going to check it out right away because 
Uh, today I want us to start unit seven, but also I want to have a little bit of uh, like fun exercise. We're going to make some interviews, see how that will go for us. So we're having a lot of things to do. Let's start right away with this. So let's check out our answers. I'm just going to make the page bigger so we can see the answers better. Okay, starting like this. All right, first exercise, we are having complete the review by writing a word from the box in each space. Now, one thing guys I want to mention. So if you've done the exercises in the book with pencil, now take something else, take like a colored pencil or something that it's in a different color. I don't want you to erase the wrong answers. I want you to cross them and write it underneath. This kind of exercise, I mean, this type of, of checking up your answers, will actually give you a little bit more improvement and clarification of what kind of mistakes you are making. So don't erase it, just put like a tiny line and then on the, on the top of it, just write the correct answer. In case, if you have mistakes, if you don't, that's fine. Then you don't have to do anything. All right, uh, let me check my battery. Okay, it's fine for now. All right, let's start with the first exercise. Um, I'll start with, Wait, wait, wait. Let me just see. What am I doing over here? Is this five? What page is? Oh, this is six. Okay. All right. We're starting over here. So slightly bigger. First, we're going to do exercise one and three because they come on the same page. So make sure you are opening this. And let's read it. Um, Amber, can you read the first exercise for, for us? All of it. Hi, Tasman. Sorry, I've taken so long to reply. In your last email, you asked what was happening with my friends. So here's my news. Lucas was disappointed with his first year exam results at university, so he's working harder now. But I think he's getting tired of studying all the time. He usually goes out in the evenings, so he must be getting very bored about life. Natalie Wait. is still bored with life. Okay, keep going, Siri. Natalie is still very mean on football and is quite proud of the two goals she scored last Saturday. However, she can't play next week, so she's sad about it. About that. Claire is crazy about music and a local band has asked her to sing with them at a concert next Friday. She's really nervous about singing in front of all those people, but I don't think she should be frightened of it. I've told her that some people will be jealous of her. Well, that's all for now. Lots of love, Bastion. Mm -hmm. Perfect, good. So we can see that Amber has one mistake over here. The rest of you guys, make sure you're having these answers. Please don't erase your answer. Just uh, cross it because you've made a mistake and then you've choose this one because at the end, I just want to know roughly how many mistakes do you have in, uh, when you're doing the homework. All right. Uh, hi, Adrina. Hi, Lisa. How are you? I'm fine. Good. Do, do you have homework? No, I'm not. No, you don't. No, you don't. Okay. All right. So let's take a look. Exercise three. We're having the uh, crosswords over here. We're going to start with a cross. What is the opposite of generous? I will ask Kylie. Kylie, can you read this exercise for us, please? I'm sorry, teacher, I did not hear that again. Can you read exercise three for us, your answers? What is number one? The opposite of generous. Teacher, I didn't do this one. You haven't done this one. Okay, that's fine. I only did the first one. Just the first exercise. 
Yeah. Did you forget the rest of them? I, I think so. <laughs> okay, Anki, do you have this one? I have some of the others, but not number one. Oh, you don't know what number one is? No. Okay, I will tell you this is mean. Generous, mean. Okay, sweetie, number five. The noun form of angry. What do you have? Jonathan, do you have this exercise number three, please? Oh, I don't have this. So who has this exercise? Raise your hand. Amber, Celine. Okay. Okay, Celine, can you read it, sweetie? Number five. The noun form of angry is anger. Anger. Good job. Next one, sweetie. Keep going. Some people are afraid of insects and spiders. Afraid. Good job. Next one. Wanting something that another person has. This I didn't do. Jealous. Jealous. Okay. And what do you have for number nine? I felt really bored because I had nothing to do. Perfect. Bored. All right. So guys, make sure you're having them uh, over here in the boxes because I cannot write them over there. Let's go, uh, Celine, with number two, please. The opposite of positive. The opposite of positive is negative. Negative, yeah. The opposite of happy is sad. Sad. Feeling worries of or anxious about something this i also didn't do nervous this is nervous very bad the word that means very bad is awful awful good and the last one a word like a word that means like a lot is love love okay cool perfect Guys, make sure you're having these sensors. If you don't have them, that's fine. You can write them down, but with a different color because you need to tell me how many mistakes you have at the end. I'm giving you a minute so you can write them down because once I uh, move the page, the answers will go everywhere. So let's just make sure that you're having the answers. Alicia is not here. Oh, she's here. She's here. Are we ready? Can I move the page? Yes or no? Amber says yes. <laughs> okay. Adriana says yes. Kylie, do you?
Okay, I'm moving the page. I hope you have it because this was supposed to be a homework. <laughs> it's not supposed to be done now, but okay, that's fine. Okay, we're going to exercise two. The blog post contains adjectives ending in ed and ing. Underline and correct five more mistakes. When I was tidying my room last Sunday, I found some surprising things. Among all the board exercise books, we're crossing board, but we say boring exercise books from my school days. Let's keep going. Uh, who has this exercise? Raise your hand. Nobody has this exercise. GAU, Amber, okay. GAU, do you wanna go next, please? There was something amazed my diary from when, from when I was eight years old. It was really interesting to read my thoughts from back then. Thought at times I felt a bit embarrassed too. For example, I was still very, very frightened of the dark in those days. It was also funny to read how excited I was about being nine soon. I thought I would be really grown up then. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you also said this one amazed with something amazing. Okay. All right. So those are the mistakes. We said five more, but I got four. What did I miss? What did I miss? Interest. Interest. Become yeah. interesting. It was really, ah, yes, 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 thank you. Yeah, I missed this one. Perfect, sweetie, well done, good job. So amazed, we will become amazing. There was something amazing. Interested, interesting. It was really interesting to read my thoughts from back then, uh, though at times I felt a bit embarrassed because it's a feeling. For example, I was still very frightened of the dark in those days. It was also very funny to read how excited I was about being nine soon. I thought I would be really grown up then. Okay, cool. Let's go to number four. Herlisher, do you have this exercise? Yes. Okay, let's, let's hear it, please. Could you run for an hour without stopping? No, I'd be too tired after two. Hold on, Siri, hold on. How about number two, three, and four? You skipped. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> Do you like going to the swimming pool? No, I couldn't swim. I couldn't? Why I couldn't? Oh, I can't swim. I can't swim, okay. Keep going, please, the whole exercise. I've got a bit of a headache. I think you should take an aspirin. You should, okay. Could you run for an hour without stopping? No, I'd be too tired after 30 minutes. Okay. Are the buses to the city center expensive? No, you don't have to pay if you're under 16. The weather is not looking very good now. You're right, I think it might rain later. What do I need to go to the USA? You should take your passport. You should or have to? You have to. You have to. Okay, good job. All right. Guys, make sure you're having this answer before we continue to unit six.
Okay, can I move my page? Can I scroll up? Only Amber says yes. Kylie, thank you. Gia you? Yep. Nathan, thank you. Celine, Jonathan, Andrina. Okay, cool. Yeah, so you're done. Let's clear this up. We go to next exercise. Okay, we are having some words over here that we need to place them where they belong. First, we're going to do exercise one and three, and then we're going to do the, the bottom one. So we're just going to make it bigger so you can see it better what we're doing over here. Okay, I want to know who has exercise one. Raise your hand. Gia Yu, Ember, Kylie, Nathan, Enki. Okay. Uh, Nathan, can you please read it for us? Okay. Are you bored of are you bored of watching reality shows on TV? Do you do you fancy doing something new? Why don't you go and see so Sir, sir, is okay. Sir, can we? Sir, Sir, Eloise. Sir, I do. Eloise, new show. How how did sus will be? Audience, sweetie. Audience. Our, audience will be amazed by the acrobatics, dance, and live music. This touring show has has already received very good reviews in other parts of the country. There are two performers each day, one at two half and the another at seven half. Tickets are still available for many days with reduced admission for students and over 16 years. The show lasts about 85 minutes with no introvert. introvert. Interval. Okay. All right. Good. Those are the correct answers. Make sure, guys, you have them. Okay. I want to know who has exercise three. There are some mistakes with present perfect and past simple and some common adverbs. You need to underline the mistakes. Jonathan has this one. All right, Jonathan, let's go with you. My grandmother has lived here for three years. For three years, good. Keep going. I haven't seen him for ages because he went to Argentina a few years ago. Good, he went. Next one. Uh, we went to the cinema three times this month. Let's do something else. Let's change gone to been. We've been to the cinema three times this month. Next one. I've already been to a few shops to look for new shoes. Perfect. You just need to change the place. I've already been. Very well. Number six, please. I, I still can't. I still can't find my mobile phone. Uh, I think there's a comma. Comma. Oh no! It's something with this one. I've looked for it. Bravo! Good job! Excellent! Okay, number seven, please. Milan is the best place I've been to for clothes. I've been. So never will become ever. I've, I have ever been for clothes. So never becomes ever. Number eight. I lost a beautiful pair of gloves which my mother gave me for my birthday. Mm -hmm. It has given, becomes, gave me. Okay. We are, planning to, 
we are planning to go out, but we haven't decided where to go yet. We haven't decided. Good job. And the last one? There's a wonderful cinema in my town. It opened six months ago. Six months ago. Bravo. It opened six months ago. We don't need has. Okay. Make sure, guys, you're putting them down. Should I read them again for you? Okay, I'll read them again for you. So make sure you're having the correct answers. Number two, my grandmother has lived here for three years, for three years. I haven't seen him for ages because he went to Argentina a few years ago. He went to Argentina a few years ago. Number four, we've been to the cinema three times this month. Let's do something else. We've been to the cinema three times this month. Let's do something else. I've already been, or I have already been to a few shops to look for new shoes. I have already been. Number six, I still can't find my mobile phone. I have looked for it everywhere. I've looked for it everywhere. Number seven, Milan is the best place I've ever been to for clothes. Milan is the best place I've ever been to for clothes. Number eight, I lost a beautiful pair of gloves, which my mother gave me for my birthday. Gave me for my birthday. We're planning to go out, but we haven't decided where to go yet. We haven't decided where to go yet. There's a wonderful cinema in my town. It opened six months ago. It opened six months ago. All right, I'm um, clearing this up, going for the second two exercises. We're going number two. Who has number two, please? Okay, Adrina, can you read it for us, please? Yes. Number one, I number two, my mom often wears bright colored shirts and long skirts. Which is the correct answer? A, B, or C? C. Why C? Because it is shirts. Okay, but why not colorful? I don't know. I think so. Colorful, yes, we're gonna go with colorful, so B. Okay, next one. Me? Yes, please. I first met my best friend when I moved to this town. Perfect, met, thank you. Next one. I'd love to go to New York to get to know the city. Get to know the city, good, and the last one? I visited Washington DC, but I haven't been to the White House. I haven't been to the White House very well. Good job. And we're having one more. Who has the last exercise? Raise your hand, please. Okay, same students. Kylie, you are next. 
I moved to Japan when I got a job here about a year ago. I have lived in Tokyo for about six months. I have to say that I have never uh, I have never lived in such an exciting city and I love it here. I've been in this flat since September and I've known my best friend since then. We got to know each other when I sat next to him in Japanese classes and we soon became good friends. We love loving we love going to the cinema to see new films. With we've already been to the cinema twice this weekend. Mm -hmm. Okay, alrighty. All right, cool. Now, those of you who have done the homework, I want to know how many of you have one to five mistakes. Raise your hand. Oh, Jonathan has. Jonathan, how many mistakes do you have? Oh, do you say one to five or one to ten? One to five. Oh, okay. Okay, five to ten mistakes. Who has five to ten mistakes? Jonathan, Inky, Amber, Adrina, Jiu, Furlisher. Okay. All right, interesting. Which exercise do you have the most mistakes, guys? Which type of exercise? Maybe this one over here, but that one was easy. I think this one was maybe a little bit tricky. Four should be easy, I think. And maybe this one, number three, where you needed to use the present perfect and past simple and the common adverbs, maybe you had more mistakes. Okay. All right, cool. Let's have a little chit chat, but this chit chat will be a little bit interactive. What does that mean? I want you to choose your partner because you're going to go in a breakout room and you're going to create an interview. I will give you an example. How is that going to happen? So you're going to have to make an interview. Basically, one of the students is going to be the popular person, but you choose what kind of job. Maybe you're a singer, maybe you're a dancer, maybe you're a scientist, maybe I don't know what you are. You choose, okay? You're going to choose your career, what you want to do. However, the other student must be the person who is asking you the questions or the interviewer. So let me show you how I am imagining for us to do that. One second. Okay, let's pick one from here. Um, which one should I pick? Let's see, let's see. Okay, so this is very simple over here. However, you need to make some good questions and give good answers, but this is very simple. So I'm gonna change that one. Let me see which one should I give it to you as a, as a guideline. Um, let me see, let me see. Okay. No, well, maybe I'm going to go with this one. So first, we're going to do this. Okay, let's do this first. So make it easy for you. After that, I want you to listen what kind of questions are asked over here. Okay. And after that, I'm going to pair you in a breakout room and I'm going to give you about 10 minutes to do so. So you're going to decide who is going to ask the question, who is going to answer the question. Okay. If you want to write them down on a piece of paper, that will be lovely. If you don't want to write them, but just practice the speaking, that, that also will do, okay? But I will come in each breakout room to hear how you're having this conversation. You can imagine, let's say that you are, I don't know, Selena Gomez, for example, and you were saying things, okay? So you need to decide who is going to be the person who is answering the question and who is going to ask the question. First thing, we're going to listen to this one. I'm going to give you the link for this one. Um, one second. Okay, copying the link, sending it to you. All right, 
So open it, please. I'm going to play it over here on my computer. You just listen the type of questions and then you're going to have to choose the correct answer. Let me just share the sound. All right. All right, I play it. Now turn to part two, questions eight to 13. You will hear an interview with a singer called Nick Parker, who plays in a band called Crispy with his sister Mel. For each question, choose the correct answer, A, B or C. You now have 45 seconds to look at the questions for part two. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. I'm talking to Nick Parker, the singer with the band called Crispy. Nick, your sister Mel plays guitar in the band too, doesn't she? Yeah, Mel's a year younger than me. We've been playing and singing together since we were eight, nine. Dad is a guitarist and took us to hear the great bands playing live. Mel and I put on shows at school, which was a lot of fun. Mum thought we were good, but she didn't want us to get too serious about our music because of the hard lives professional musicians have. When did you start writing music? I've been writing since I was ten. And later, Mel started working with me. We didn't have the same influences. I liked rock music, and she loved world music, especially bands from Africa. But we found good ways of mixing the styles. Your band, Crispy, has two guys and two girls in it. How was it formed? Mel and I were playing in a concert at our college, and there were two students from music school in the audience. They came to see us after the show and asked if we'd like to form a band with them. We weren't sure at first because we were much younger than them, but we agreed to try it out and it was brilliant. Was the band an immediate success? Well, we spent the first year practicing and writing music. During that time, we all had studying to do. We played in local concerts and the audiences enjoyed what we did. Then, during one holiday, we recorded two songs and sent them to a music company. They offered us a contract, but our parents said we had to finish college first. You've been together a few years now, and you're one of the top bands. What's that like? Hard work. We travel to concerts all round the world and are never in one place for more than a few nights. The others are like an older brother and sister to me and Mel, which is good. They help us relax on our days off and make sure we eat well. They're strict about practising too. Have you had any disappointments? Everything we've recorded has done well. Three singles have gone to number one, and our first album has sold over a million copies. Our second album was due out this winter, but I've been ill recently so we've started recording late, which is a pity. But for the rest, everything's fine. Now listen again. I'm talking to Nick Parker, the singer with the band called Crispy. Nick, your sister Mel plays guitar in the band too, doesn't she? Yeah, Mel's a year younger than me. We've been playing and singing together since we were eight, nine. Dad is a guitarist and took us to hear the great bands playing live. Mel and I put on shows at school, which was a lot of fun. Mum thought we were good, but she didn't want us to get too serious about our music because of the hard lives professional musicians have. When did you start writing music? I've been writing since I was ten. And later, Mel started working with me. We didn't have the same influences. I liked rock music, and she loved world music, especially bands from Africa. But we found good ways of mixing the styles. Your band, Crispy, has two guys and two girls in it. How was it formed? Mel and I were playing in a concert at our college, and there were two students from music school in the audience. 
They came to see us after the show and asked if we'd like to form a band with them. We weren't sure at first because we were much younger than them, but we agreed to try it out, and it was brilliant. Was the band an immediate success? Well, we spent the first year practicing and writing music. During that time, we all had studying to do. We played in local concerts, and the audiences enjoyed what we did. Then, during one holiday, we recorded two songs and sent them to a music company. They offered us a contract, but our parents said we had to finish college first. You've been together a few years now, and you're one of the top bands. What's that like? Hard work. We travel to concerts all round the world, and are never in one place for more than a few nights. The others are like an older brother and sister to me and Mel, which is good. They help us relax on our days off, and make sure we eat well. They're strict about practicing too. Have you had any disappointments? Everything we've recorded has done well. Three singles have gone to number one, and our first album has sold over a million copies. Our second album was due out this winter, but I've been ill recently, so we've started recording late, which is a pity. But for the rest, everything's fine. That is the end of part two. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Let's submit, guys, and let's see how many mistakes you have. Okay, let's see. Okay. Um, eight out of three, eight out of three. That's only one mistake here. Okay, cool. Nathan, oh, Adriana. One, two, three, three mistakes. Okay. GAU, okay, so also three mistakes. The rest of you guys, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, only seven. Aiden, thank you. Jonathan, thank you. Okay, so now I'm going to put you in breakout rooms. I'm sending you in the chat uh, like a couple of questions. Now it depends what you want to choose. I will give you an example. For example, let's say I am, me and Kylie, we decide we're going to speak about a singer. Okay, first you decide who you're going to talk about. And let's say we decide we're going to speak a singer. So I'm going to ask you, who would you like to be? Would you like to be the singer or would you like to uh, be the interviewer? And she will say, well, I want to be a singer. Okay, cool. I need to make the question. So I'm going to ask her, for example. So tell me, where do you originally come from? Okay. These questions are just like guidelines, but you need to extend them. You need to make them better. And she's going to say, well, actually, I'm from America, but I've been living in England for 10 years, for example. Right. I want you to find seven to 10 questions, seven to 10 questions to ask your friend, doesn't matter. Maybe they don't wanna be a singer. Maybe they wanna be a sports player. Maybe they wanna be a computer gamer. I don't care what they're gonna be, okay? But they just need to be, let's say a little bit popular and you need to ask them questions, okay? So I'm gonna create some breakout rooms. Doesn't matter who goes with who, where, 
okay? I just want you to cooperate. Remember, I can come in, I can listen to what you're saying, but you cannot actually see me. So that's also a tricky part. So please make sure that you're practicing speaking. I'm going to leave two students here in the main room so they can have the chat here. And uh, yeah. Yes, Adrina? Did you can we use your question? You can, but you have to modify it. You have to change it slightly. Uh, okay, thanks. All right. So let's create. For a moment, you think about what you want to be. I will set the breakout rooms. Okay, so. Okay. Um, okay. Magdalene, is your microphone working? Yes. Okay. All right. Just wanted to check that with you. I'm Sheehan. Sheehan's microphone is not working. Is it working? Let me see. Sheehan, is your microphone working? I don't think I can hear you very well, but okay, let's try that. Let's see. Okay. Okay, I'm going to need actually six rooms to create. Okay, yes, six rooms. Okay, so we are putting Enki and Adrina. Aiden and Jason. Mm. Carly Scher and Chia Yu. Jonathan and Nathan. Celine and Kylie. Okay, and Yinzin and Sheehan. Magdalene and Ember will stay in the main room. So remember, guys, you decide who is going to be the person who is asking the question, who is going to uh, give the answers. Make sure you're using present tense and you're using past tense as well. So you can ask something about general habits, something that is happening now, or you can also ask about something that happened previously, okay? If you wanna write it down, that's perfect. If you just wanna practice, or if you need an inspiration to have a picture in front of you, I don't mind, okay? I just wanna hear you talking, okay? I'm sending you, I am going to give you about 10 minutes for this, okay? After the 10 minutes, the, the room will close and then you're going to have five minute break. And after that, I'm going to choose a couple of students here to have the chat again with us. All right. OK. Good luck. I'll stop sharing, though. Jason, go with Aiden, please. Maybe he's not even here. Okay, Amber and Magdalene, you can start. I'll switch off my camera. I want to hear you talking. You decide who is going to be the interviewer, who is going to uh, reply the questions. Hi, Magdalene. Hi, Amber. Um, do you want to be the interviewer or the singer? Um, I think I'll be the singer. Okay, then I'll be the interviewer.
What are you going to ask her? Did you kind of write it down in a piece of paper first? Yes, yes, you can. Yeah, of course. Let me check the other ones. What are they doing? I'll be back. Um, what do you think we should start? Um, to be honest, I have totally no idea. Maybe. Why do you want to be a singer? Because I think singing, I enjoy singing and I love to sing since I was young. And I think singing really makes me feel very happy and relaxed yeah Same. Hmm. what motivates you to do this job Mm, maybe it's the encouragement that you get from your fans and the achievement you get like money or something you earn from the album or a single song yeah okay thanks. Do you have a favorite song that you listen every time? Yes, of course. I love Cambodia. Yeah, okay. Cambodia. It's oh. a song sang by two people, a man and a woman. I think it really shoots my heart and it is really relaxing and it will feel that you are releasing stress while listening to that music. Mm. Are you afraid to sing on stage at first? Of course. Okay. But as long as I sing on stage and then I'll comfort myself and say I'm enjoying the stage and after a long time then I'll completely be suited into the stage and don't feel any stress or nervous. Okay, good. Mm. Would you like to sing with someone famous? Of course, you can learn from the other seniors maybe the other famous singers you will sing to, you can learn something to them as a junior and you can learn many things and improve yourself yeah i agree so five questions now maybe two more oh of course um, Well, maybe something easy. How about Do you enjoy singing? Yes, of course. It if I don't enjoy then I can't continue until now because singing needs motivation. If you don't enjoy it, you will feel very tired and exhausted. So the 
more the long time you don't like it, but you still continue it, you're very tired. It was like thinking about to stop or end it. Yeah. Next question. Oh, what kind of music do you like? I like soft songs that is maybe a little bit sad or we call emo, yeah, emotional songs. Because it's like singing maybe, singing these songs let me feel like I'm telling a story using my song. Yeah, and the lyrics, yeah. Okay, seven questions. Sorry? Um, we have seven questions already. Yeah, okay. So is that, that's all? Okay. Do you think we should come up one more question? I'm okay with that. If so I don't know what to ask. you. Um. Do you sing when you shower? Oh, <laughs> this is a, of course, it's a yes. <laughs> singing in, in the toilet in the toilet yeah in the toilet there is you know there's an echo in the toilet so you can listen clearly your you know your singing and you'll know you'll think that you're singing so good and the echo makes you feel you can sing very well even there is no music yeah i agree do you sing in the toilet when you shower too? Oh, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we're done. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, some of you actually had very interesting conversations. Uh, I really like that. The conversation was super good, super nice, interesting. Uh, so what's going to happen now? Well, I'm going to give you a short break, about five to seven minutes. If you need to go to the toilet, get some water, whatever you need to do. Once we are back, we're going um, to we're gonna try to do the same thing over here, just a couple of students. And after that, we're starting unit seven. Does that sound good? Yeah, cool. Use your break and be back here so we can continue. Okay, hey guys, I'm back, but I'm giving you just a little bit more time so you can come back in case if you're not here. Most of you are. Okay, good. Okay, cool. Let's hear some of the conversations that you have in front of the group. Obviously, I will start with um, Nathan and Jonathan. Oh, do you want to ask me or should I ask you? 
Um, maybe you ask me. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, what is your name? My name is Nathan. Uh, what what is your current job? Uh, engineer. Why did you choose to be an engineer? An engineer. Because I really enjoy it, and mm. it was fun. What is your motivation to do this job? My family and friend encourage me to do this job. Uh, do you have a favorite song? Um, not really. Do you sing when uh, you are in the shower? Yeah, um, because sometimes I was bored. Are you shy? Yes. Would you like to sing with someone famous and if so, who and why? Yeah, I would like to sing with someone famous, but there was too many famous people on the world and I don't know who to choose it. And this can be as a memory. Okay. Well, thank okay. you. All right. So Jonathan, you only choose the question that I wrote in the chat box. You didn't use any of your questions. <laughs> okay. Enki and Adrina, let's hear you. So do I ask you or you ask? Um, I don't know. Uh, up to up to you. Uh, I'll ask you. Okay. <laughs> I think I am. I might um uh, change my role. Oh okay. Um, what's your job? Um, wait. Maybe a famous swimmer. Pardon. A famous swimmer. Swimmer, okay. Um, yep. What encouraged you to do this? Uh... Pardon? Uh, can, you, can you repeat uh -huh. it again? What encouraged you to swim? Um, one of the reasons I love swimming because um, when I was a kid, my parents taught me to swim when I was young. So that's why um I swim until I grown up. How how long do you usually train a day? Um, about about three hours a day. Do you train every day? Um yes. Do you train with a club or do you have your own training? Yes, sorry. Do you train with a club or do you have someone to train with? I have someone to train me, but all the rest of the the steps I can do it um by myself. Okay. All right, good. I love that. That was very interesting. Let's choose uh, Magdalene and Amber. They were in the main room. Hi, Magdalene. Hi, Amber. Um, what's your current job? I'm a singer now. Why do you want to be a singer? Because I enjoy singing and I think that it could be a good um, it could be a good job for me because I enjoy it and I won't feel that it is boring and I won't want to end it. What motivates you to do this job? Mm, maybe the achievements such as the rewards and the money I earn and also the courage that is given by my fans, this all motivates me. Do you have a favorite song that you listen every time? Yes, of course. Um, my favorite song is named Kobardia. Kobardia. It is a song sang by a man and a woman. It is very relaxing and 
I really stress when I listen to this song. Great. Are you afraid to sing on stage at first? Of course, I feel very nervous and I I nearly broke my I nearly finished my whole job when I'm first thing on so on the stage but after that I feel that it is not as scary as I am that I th thought that but at last it became a habit and I don't feel I'm nervous anymore. Would you like to sing with someone famous? Yeah of course because if singing with someone famous it's like learning something from a senior and you can learn very useful tips or singing tips yeah from the singer that's great do you enjoy singing yes of course what kind of music do you like i like emotional songs because when singing emotional songs you can tell the stories by using your sound and your songs. Great. One last thing. Do you sing when you shower? <laughs> oh, of course, yes. Because the echo in the toilet may let you hear, listen to your song clearly. And echo, echoes is like a speaker that make your singing without music become like having a music and edited yeah that's amazing thank you for your time thank you awesome you did amazing girls well done perfect good job bravo <laughs> okay that was interesting uh next time i'm actually already having ideas from some of you that i heard something so i just wrote them down next week we're going to do something a little bit different from this and now let's go to unit seven unit seven is all about getting around now i complained about the weather at the beginning i can still see it's 30 degrees outside apparently it says it's raining but it's not so uh the weather uh, forecast is incorrect now i know in your country you don't actually have winter but some of you actually already said to me that you prefer to have colder days rather than warmer days and I'm the same kind of person. I prefer a little bit cooler days rather than hot days. Obviously, UK is not that hot, but summer times, it's hot everywhere, I think. And they said that in the next two weeks, we're going to have a lot of hot days. So I don't know how we're going to handle that because the houses in the UK or the flats are not built for hot weather. Probably you've heard before, like the first thing that crosses my mind to people when they speak about the UK or London is the rain. So many, many years ago, it was raining pretty much every day. Now it doesn't rain that often, uh, but here and there, yes, it does uh, maybe a couple of drops during the day. That should be fine. It's not really a big deal. However, we've never experienced weather like this. So obviously with the global climate, things got changed all over the world, especially here, obviously in the UK, I can say about the UK. Uh, but you know better for your country. Now, I know your country is always summer. It's always hot weather. I believe sometimes you get fed up of it. <laughs> you don't really like it. But unfortunately, unless you move, you don't have many choices, right? So today in this unit, unit seven, will actually be related about places you can visit, different kind of weather conditions that you can have in certain places. So first question for you guys, uh, how many seasons do we have in Zin? How many seasons do we have? Pardon? How many seasons? Spring, summer, what are the other two? Winter. Spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Yes, so we have four seasons.
season. Very well, good job. So in this picture, we can see different kind of weather, right? In the first one, probably it's like early spring or maybe summer. In the second one, we can see what kind of weather? Adrina, picture two, how is the weather like over here? Um, windy. Okay, windy. Anything else? Stormy. Second picture, is it stormy? Maybe. Are you sure? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Oh, I, think uh, I know, I know, I know. Foggy. Foggy, exactly. Good. But stormy will be which picture? Number four. Number four, definitely. Okay, guys, so you're having words. Cold, foggy, freezing, frost, hot, icy, ice, icy, lightning, rainy, shower, snowy, storm, sunny, sunshine, thunderstorm, and windy. But you have to put them in which picture they belong. For example, if we have cold in picture three, you're just going to have to put like number three next to it. Okay, so let's start with the first picture. Um, Nathan, can you tell me about picture one? Which words did you choose? Hot. Okay. Hot, sunshine, sunny, okay. and just that. Sunny and sunshine. All right, good. Celine, how about picture two? Foggy. Okay. Frost. Shower. Windy. Okay, so you have showers. Windy. Oh, you have frost as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how about picture three, Aiden? Aiden. Uh, teacher, just now my parents called me. Uh, where are, where are you? Where are we? We're here. Where are you? <laughs> I'm asking you which words are linked with picture three. Uh, frost, freeze, uh, freezing. Okay, so freezing. You said frost as well. Okay. Uh, snowy, snowy, and uh, ice and ice. Uh, icy. Icy. Okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you. How about picture for uh, Hellisher? Um, lightning. Okay. Storm. Storm, yeah. Thunderstorm. Thunderstorm, good. Rainy. Rainy. Okay. So guys, what happens with cold and ice? They belong in the third picture. Third picture, okay, yes. Cold could be third picture, I agree. And ice could also be third picture because it's winter. Yes, that's true. Okay. All right, good. Very well. Good job. So we do know, are we familiar with all of the words? Is there a word you don't understand? What's the difference between ice and icy? What's the difference? This is the road. It's icy. It's slippery. It's icy, which means you're going to slip and fall. But if I say it's ice everywhere, okay? Does that make difference? I see you walking and you slip and fall. It's icy, I can't walk. Oh, look at that ice all around, like on the houses under the roof. So that's the difference. Okay. Um, how about showers? What does that mean? Showers. It doesn't rain, starts raining, stops, starts raining, 
stops. So it goes showers like here and there. Um, what is a storm? Storm. When outside is very windy, like the trees, maybe some of the trees will fall down if it's too windy and maybe it's raining a lot, so it's kind of dangerous. However, when we have thunderstorm, you have those lightnings on the, on the sky. So that is thunderstorm because you can hear a noise and you it can also like a lightning, it will blink and it's not very nice. I don't like it, <laughs> but th this is what it is. Okay, good, good, perfect. All right, so next thing we're going to do. Oh, actually, let's, let's take a look at this one. I think maybe we're not going to do it, but let's do it very quickly. A couple of phrases over here we have. Um, I hope the sun will come out soon, which means I hope the sun will start shining soon. Now, I'm interested in the second picture, uh, in the second picture, in the second sentence. Kylie, what does this mean? Uh, the word chili. Yes. What does it mean? It's cold. It's cold. It's not like unpleasant cold. Like maybe you are in short sleeves, but you feel like it will be good if you have like extra jacket. So it's a little bit chilly, chilly by the sea. Okay. Amber, what does it mean? It's pouring outside. Raining. Raining, but what kind of raining? Is it heavy raining or light raining? Heavy raining, when it's raining like a lot, like a lot, a lot of rain, we're gonna say it's pouring outside. Okay, how about the next one? Celine, open the window, it's boiling in here. I'm not sure. Okay, all right, guys. Okay, so I was, that's my mistake. You know what we're going to do? We're going to write them down. So please take your pencils. So as we said, chili, next to it, we're going to put it is cold. Okay, it's pouring, heavy raining, or raining a lot, heavy rain. It's boiling means so hot. So we're going to put here very hot. Even in summer, it, it gets quite nippy at night. Nippy. A little bit cold, a little bit cool. So it gets quite nippy, quite nippy, cold, like a little bit cold. I was cloudy. It was cloudy earlier, but then the weather cleared up. Cleared up? The sky became clear. The sky became clear. Because of the soaring temperatures, lots of people have gone to the mountains. Soaring temperatures. The temperatures were rising. Soaring, rising temperatures. Rising temperatures. I'll put it over here. Rising temperatures oh, like here in the UK we have soaring temperatures okay so make sure you're having this answers please not answers but these are very useful phrases that you can use that if it's raining outside oh it's pouring or if you know the idiom it's raining cats and dogs which means it's raining a lot Boiling, it's very hot. Like when you take a pan, you put it on the stove and you want to heat some water, the water needs to boil, right? So it's boiling. Nippy, it's a little bit cold. Cleared up, the sky was full with clouds, but now has been cleared up, so it's not that uh, cloudy. Soaring temperatures, rising temperatures, temperatures going up. Okay, next exercise will be listening. 
listening exercise. So, okay, let's go here. We're having a couple of questions over here. I will give you like a couple of minutes so you can go through the questions because you need to be familiar with the text. It will be something linked with these two particularly um, cold pictures that are, well, the picture cannot be actually cold, but it represents a lot of cold temperatures. So I want you to go through the questions. What have I done? I'm sorry, what have I done? Oh no, I switched off the... No. Where did my book go? <laughs> okay, I need to do it again, sorry. Okay, so... I think I switched off the book, I'm so sorry. Silly me. Silly, silly me. Uh, PET, where's my book? Okay, here it is. Okay, so I want you to take a look at the questions. Uh, maybe there's something you don't understand in the questions. Don't focus on the words you don't understand, but focus on the words you do understand, okay? So that will make a little bit more easier for you. Okay, I'm going to play it now. Let's put the sound. Sound on. Unit seven, grammar, exercise one. Look at the rain, Owen. Yes, I know. I'm hoping it'll stop soon, but I don't think there's much chance of that. No, the weather forecasts. Unit seven, listening, part four. Exercise 2. You will hear an interview with a girl called Olivia, talking about her experience of travelling through a snowstorm with her parents. For each question, choose the correct answer. Today, I'm talking to Olivia Richardson, who was in central Italy when over two metres of snow fell in 24 hours. Where exactly were you, Olivia, when that happened? Near Capricotta in the mountains, there had already been some light snow and we stopped for a quick meal before carrying on to a crossroads. But there, we took a wrong turning and got completely lost. Then, while we were trying to decide how to get back to the main road, some really heavy snow started coming down. <laughs> was that frightening? At first, I was quite certain it wouldn't last long. It was March in Italy, so I wasn't worried. Of course, it was rather annoying we'd gone the wrong way, but I couldn't blame Mum and Dad because it had been my idea, and we were still moving, but not very fast. When did you have to stop? Well, it was getting quite difficult to see, and we nearly crashed into a parked car. There was more and more snow on the road, so when we tried to go up a steep hill, the wheels started going round really fast, but it was so deep, the car just wouldn't move forwards. It looked as if we'd be stuck there, but we didn't have much petrol left, so we switched off the engine. Dad tried to phone for help, but couldn't get through. Hmm. How did you stay warm with the car heater? That meant having the engine on, so we only used it a bit. Instead, we got all our jumpers, trousers and socks from our suitcases and wore them all night. We were still frozen, though, and wished we had some coffee or tea with us. So you spent the whole night inside the car? Yes. My mum had managed to contact the emergency services. They knew our location from our phone signal, and they advised us to stay in our vehicle until help could be sent the next day. That's what we did. But by then, the snow was starting to cover the car completely. 
so we cleared a space next to the doors in case we needed to get out. <sighs> How did you get moving again? The rescue vehicles didn't get there until the afternoon. They'd called to ask if we needed an ambulance, and luckily we didn't. So they just cleared the snow and led us along the road back to the main road. We then drove to the nearest village. There we stopped for an enormous hot meal of roast fish and pasta with cheese. The most delicious I've ever tasted. Do you have some of the answers? Okay, well, we're going to hear it one more time. So this time we need to check your answers and then we're going to check, do, we, do you have the correct answers? Let's play it again. Unit 7. Listening. Part 4. Exercise 2. You will hear an interview with a girl called Olivia, talking about her experience of travelling through a snowstorm with her parents. For each question, choose the correct answer. Today, I'm talking to Olivia Richardson, who was in central Italy when over two metres of snow fell in 24 hours. Where exactly were you, Olivia, when that happened? Near Capricotta in the mountains. There had already been some light snow and we stopped for a quick meal before carrying on to a crossroads. But there we took a wrong turning and got completely lost. Then, while we were trying to decide how to get back to the main road, some really heavy snow started coming down. <laughs> Was that frightening? At first, I was quite certain it wouldn't last long. It was March in Italy, so I wasn't worried. Of course, it was rather annoying we'd gone the wrong way, but I couldn't blame Mum and Dad because it had been my idea, and we were still moving, but not very fast. When did you have to stop? Well, it was getting quite difficult to see, and we nearly crashed into a parked car, there was more and more snow on the road, so when we tried to go up a steep hill, the wheels started going round really fast, but it was so deep, the car just wouldn't move forwards. It looked as if we'd be stuck there, but we didn't have much petrol left, so we switched off the engine. Dad tried to phone for help, but couldn't get through. Hmm. How did you stay warm with the car heater? That meant having the engine on, so we only used it a bit. Instead, we got all our jumpers, trousers and socks from our suitcases and wore them all night. We were still frozen, though, and wished we had some coffee or tea with us. So you spent the whole night inside the car? Yes. My mum had managed to contact the emergency services. They knew our location from our phone signal and they advised us to stay in our vehicle until help could be sent the next day. That's what we did. But by then, the snow was starting to cover the car completely, so we cleared a space next to the doors in case we needed to get out. <sighs> How did you get moving again? The rescue vehicles didn't get there until the afternoon. They'd called to ask if we needed an ambulance, and luckily we didn't. So they just cleared the snow and led us along the road back to the main road. We then drove to the nearest village. There we stopped for an enormous hot meal of roast fish and pasta with cheese. The most delicious I've ever tasted. Okay, do we have the answers now? Yes, no? All right. Let's see, let's start with the first one. Um, I'll start with Gia Yu. When it started to snow heavily, Olivia and Grace were be driving along a main road. Okay, guys, do we agree? Do we agree it's B? Yes or no? No. No? So what is the correct answer, Celine? C. 
You said C. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else think something different? Okay, I need to read the, the answer again. Okay. Actually, the correct answer is A. It's not B and it's not C. And we're gonna play it again later so you can hear why. So the correct answer is A for the first one. Um, Jason, number two, please. I didn't hear anything. No, that's not the correct answer. Enki, what do you have for the second one? I got C. You got C. C is not the correct answer. Amber, what do you have? I got B. B. B is the correct answer. Yes. We're going to play it. So you're going to see why is it B, okay? We're going to play it one more time. Okay, question three, Adrina. Number three is B. Number three is B, okay. I agree with this one. Uh, Magdalene, number four. How did they try to keep warm in the car? They kept the heater on all night. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's the correct answer. Jonathan? Uh, I wrote B for four. Uh huh. Uh, Kylie? I had A. You have A, and A is the correct answer. Good. Okay, number five, Celine. They were in the car nearly all night because they had been told not to leave it. Mm -hmm. B, I agree. This is the correct answer. And number six, um, Yin Zin. What do you have? Number C. Oh, number C. Number six. Sweetie, do you have an answer for the sixth question? Nathan, what do you have for the sixth one? Uh, C. C, C is the correct answer. Okay. How many of you have these answers? Raise your hand. Okay. Celine, how many of you had five correct answers? Okay. How many of you had four correct answers? So it's a lot of fours. Huh, okay. All right. Let's play it one more time so you can hear why exactly. Unit 7. Listening. Part 4. Exercise 2. You will hear an interview with a girl called Olivia, talking about her experience of traveling through a snowstorm with her parents. For each question, choose the correct answer. Today, I'm talking to Olivia Richardson, who was in central Italy when over two metres of snow fell in 24 hours. Where exactly were you, Olivia, when that happened? Near Capricotta in the mountains. There had already been some light snow, and we stopped for a quick meal before carrying on to a crossroads. 
But there, we took a wrong turning and got completely lost. Then, while we were trying to decide how to get back to the main road, some really heavy snow started coming down. Hmm. Was so, do you see where was the answer? So, they say that it started to snow heavily, right? But they were talking because they had the wrong turn. So, they didn't know what to do. They were discussing about it. Because they stopped. They weren't driving. Is that frightening? At first, I was quite certain it wouldn't last long. It was March in Italy, so I wasn't worried. Of course, it was rather annoying we'd gone the wrong way, but I couldn't blame Mum and Dad because it had been my idea, and we were still moving, but not very fast. When did you have to stop? Well, it was getting quite difficult to see, and we nearly crashed into a parked car, there was more and more snow on the road, so when we tried to go up a steep hill, the wheels started going round really fast, but it was so deep, the car just wouldn't move forwards. It looked as if we'd be stuck there, but we didn't have much petrol left, so we switched off the engine. Dad tried to phone for help, but couldn't get through. Hmm. How did you stay warm with the car heater? That meant having the engine on, so we only used it a bit. Instead, we got all our jumpers, trousers and socks from our suitcases and wore them all night. We were still frozen, though, and wished we had some coffee or tea with us. So you spent the whole night inside the car? Yes. My mum had managed to contact the emergency services. They knew our location from our phone signal and they advised us to stay in our vehicle until help could be sent the next day. That's what we did. But by then, the snow was starting to cover the car completely, so we cleared a space next to the doors in case we needed to get out. <sighs> How did you get moving again? The rescue vehicles didn't get there until the afternoon. They'd called to ask if we needed an ambulance, and luckily we didn't. So they just cleared the snow and led us along the road back to the main road. We then drove to the nearest village. There we stopped for an enormous hot meal of roast fish and pasta with cheese. The most delicious I've ever tasted. Okay, so I admit, I, I will admit this, that this text was a little bit confusing because basically the questions you have over here is not necessarily something they actually talk about it, so you have to kind of pick it up. So I understand that. I would agree that this exercise wasn't the easiest, probably. But well done, Celine. She said she had a six out of six, so that's good. That's perfect. Okay, how much time we have? We have about 15 minutes. Um, okay, I want to give you a quiz first, and let's see how it's going to go for us. Uh, it is about some adverbs. Okay, what are adverbs though? What is an adverb? Who knows? What is the role of an adverb in a sentence? What does it do to a sentence? Adverb, adverb. It explains the verb. We forgot everything, huh? Okay, let's open this one. Um, we haven't learned this necessarily. However, I think you will be familiar with some of the sentences. So I want you to join this uh, quiz. And we're going to play this. It's about 20 questions. So I want you to just go through the questions and see what is logically for you. Some of them, it will be super easy. Others will be a little bit challenging, not too much. Uh, but let's see. So we are 16, actually 14 students need to join. Maybe some of you will be late because of your internet. That's fine. If you're having issues with this page, close your camera, please. Should be easier and I'll play it for you in a second. Okay, we got nine, we need 14. 
Okay, 11 students, we need more, three more. I don't know who's missing. Shein is here, Yinzin is here. Kurlisher, she's not here. I hear she is. Okay, we need one more. I don't know who is that now, let's see. Nathan is here, Jonathan is here. Aiden, is Aiden here? He's here. Uh, oh, okay, Adrina. Okay, sorry, 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 it's Adrina. We're waiting for her. So adverbs, adverbs of degree, which means sometimes we can change them with certain words. But let's see how it's gonna work. Everyone is here, let's play it. Good luck, everyone. By the way, I'm going to give you homework. It will be listening task. I needed to sneeze, sorry. <laughs> okay, so it will be just a listening task. It's not too big. It's not, it's, it's okay, five to 10 minutes. So we got PET, PET. Um, okay, copying the link, sending it to you in the chat box. This will be the homework. However, I will send it in the WhatsApp group as well. Just one second while we're waiting. So I'm going to put here latest homework because next week we will talk about this. Um, okay, you're done. Good job. Amber, Adrina, and Enki is first. Well done. Okay, let's just see uh, who has the best answers. Okay. Just want to see if someone has everything correct hold on enki has everything correct well done enki good job adrina has one two mistakes and amber two three three mistakes nice good job good job guys very well so Obviously, we will learn about this next week, okay? But I just, today I wanted to see how you're recognizing them and how you're gonna match them in a sentence. So don't worry about your score at the moment, but well done, Enki, all correct. Good job. Anyway, guys, for your homework, I send you a link in the chat box here and in WhatsApp as well. So next week we will continue with adverbs of uh, degree. That will be for next week. Uh, by the way, I wanna ask you very quickly before I let you go. How many of you are going to take the test in December? Raise your hand. How many of you are going to do the PET test in December? Aiden, Amber, Sheehan, Furlisher, JU, Adrina, Kylie, Jonathan. Okay. Okay, so the others you don't want to do it in December? You're not sure? Think about it, guys, because I think you're ready. I think you're ready to do the exam. Of course, you might just gonna pass the level, but not necessarily you're gonna have the highest marks. You might gonna have the highest marks, but it doesn't matter. The goal here is for you to pass and to feel comfortable with this level. However, that doesn't mean that you're good to go, okay? We still have like five, five months, roughly, not even five months to practice even more. So we need to improve all of this, but okay, good. Good, thank you so much for today. I think we did quite an amazing job today. We had a little bit of speaking, a little bit of grammar, a little bit of listening, a little bit of everything. So well done, it was a good class, well productive. Uh, enjoy your week and I'm going to see you in seven days. Bye. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. bye. Thank you, teacher.